Uh, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. This is going to be your third episode of this series and we will discuss the painting. For those of you that are new in here, feel free to click on the card that appears on the top right corner of your screen. It is a link to the playlist that contains all the videos uploaded until now. Without further ado, here are the details. All right, the disappointments and the advantages, where to begin, when to stop. I ended up buying the Rust-Oleum Truck Bed Professional Kit. It's supposed to be a better quality than the other options and it's an epoxy, which needs to be mixed truly and then let it for a while, etc. But this is supposed to be a better coating, more durable, harder finish, therefore more resistant to scratches than compared to air dry paint. Let's start from the beginning. This kit retails for about $100 and includes what will be about a three quarter of a gallon once mixed. The manufacturer claims that this is enough for an eight foot bed, uh, the floor, the three sides and the tailgate. It also comes with a 40 inch uh, roller, gloves, brush and sandpaper. The paint comes on a big pouch system with two smaller pockets inside and literally one contains the base and the other one contains the hardener. These two parts must be mixed in properly. For this paint, they recommend mixing and massaging the pouch for about 15 minutes. Once mixed together, they create a chemical reaction that starts the drying process. After that, the paint should sit undisturbed for a period called induction time. In our case, one hour. That was my first disappointment. The pouch system is supposed to be awesome, but it's not. I got a background in painting, I've been a professional painter for about 20 years, and I dealt with several specialty coatings on my career. The problem with a pouch is that you cannot see the product, and therefore you must trust that you did a good job, a proper mixing, besides the soft packaging make it easy to miss spots, especially at the corner. One thing that they mentioned though, is to be mindful of the corners, and to squeeze them to the center occasionally. Most of the boxes I've worked with in the past come on an almost full can, so you can mix the base by itself, making sure that any settling that might occur gets corrected. And to that can, then you add your hardener, activator, reducer, etc. Technically, all the other components that conform the boxes. And more importantly, you can use mechanical mixing, whole hell power tools. A variable speed drill equipped with a paddle works wonders on these things. I grabbed a bin and a bucket screen for some of the concoction and grabbed the included roller. Here comes disappointment number two. For a track bed, the 4 inch roller should be perfect too. For this, mostly flat areas, no way Jose. In hindsight, I should have brought my own roller. The smaller footprint of the roller made for more overlaps, therefore more streaks, and since this was a mesh roller, it doesn't have any fabric that absorbs the paint. All it does is just pick it up from the tray, transfer it to the surface, but very unevenly. It was a task to get rid of the marks. I did three passes on two different directions and with different pressure to achieve a somewhat uniform coating than I was satisfied with. I'm going to let you in on a little trade secret. Hopefully this will help you on your next paint job. When you apply paint with a roller, you want to come back to calm the surface. You want to do this reducing the pressure on the roller until you don't hear the hissing of the wet paint. You, you'll know what I'm saying once you put the roller on the wall or the surface. One thing I have to disclose though, I misread the instruction and my understanding was to apply a second coat after one hour. 
when in reality it says within one hour. So by the time I came to do the second kill, the pain had gotten hard and it was difficult to work with. Once I realized that, I made sure I completed the top and the front of the topper, paying special attention to the plywood I used to replace the glass window. Those areas will be hard to reach after the topper gets installed. Besides, I can do fairly easy if needed. If you decide to use this product, please cover all surrounding areas. I didn't, trying to show off my painting skills. And I made a quite a mess, uh, why should I have happy? I know that I sounded like a Debbie Downer, but I am happy with the product. In all honesty, after a few weeks that I have completed the painting and I can see the product fully cured, I'm okay with it. I found the texture to be extremely rough, not that I dislike it, but I wasn't really expecting it that way. It was a big difference from the can that I think I mentioned on this episode too when I was comparing both coats. If I have to do this again, would I use this product? Uh, maybe not. And it's not that I completely dislike this product. I don't think there is nothing that prevents this paint from forming as intended. And I don't want to discourage anybody from using this product. Please, understand this, I'm not endorsing it in any way, shape or form, neither the other way around. I paid for it and I used it, but I have the knowledge of a career of painting. And for me, using this, it seems a little silly. It doesn't feel right. There's a lot of products out there that you can use for this purpose. And from my perspective, this is my personal opinion. I would rather use a different system, maybe something more professionally oriented. Something you can mix mechanically that will give me a little bit more of peace of mind. What I'm trying to say is for the price I paid for hundred dollars, I'm happy with the product. I believe I could have done better if I made uh, better research, but it's my first time using this kind of paint and I went with the most expensive one I can buy in any store. Please don't feel discouraged by my words. I am more upset at myself by doing the wrong choice than at the product itself. Once again, I'm not endorsed by them. But I believe that I have to make justice to their product. And just because I didn't like it, it doesn't mean it's bad. I'm pretty sure it will perform as intended and time will prove it. At this point, it's almost time for the next video. In the top left corner, you'll be able to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. You can check the latest video by clicking on the link at the top right corner on your screen. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you like the video or click the other one if you didn't. Feel free to comment and please subscribe. When you do, click on the bell icon to enable notification. Thank you very much for watching. Until the next video.